If you want to be a slave in life, then continue going around asking others to do for you. They will oblige, but you will find the price is your choices, your freedom, your life itself. They will do for you, and as a result, you will be in bondage to them forever, having given your identity away for a paltry price. Then, and only then, you will be a nobody, a slave, because you yourself and nobody else made it so. Terry Goodkin, The Pillars of Creation As many of you who follow this channel might be aware, it is my belief that the elite of this country and the elite of this world want to make the everyday person, the general masses, less independent and more dependent. They want to turn the Declaration of Independence into the Declaration of Dependence. And about six months ago, I discovered a rather nefarious method that they're using to make our children more dependent on this system. Let me start off with how I discovered this, and it also explains why I've been away for so long. Last February, my cousin moved into my house. She moved in February, she was pregnant, she had a child, and then uh, she already had a, a, another child with another man. The story of our times, uh, girls having kids with multiple men, you know, it's a real tragedy, but I'm not going to get into that right now. So she moved in February, and then around August of last year, she ended up getting custody of her five-year-old daughter. Her five-year-old daughter, Elizabeth, moved in with us, and she she went to the doctor, and the the doctor performed, and, and this was not an eye doctor, it's just a regular doctor, they, they did a general checkup, and the, the doctor did an eye exam on her. Well, not an eye exam, you know, she, the doctor had her look at an, an eye chart. And, uh, and the doctor said that she needed glasses. But there was one thing this doctor was not including in this exam, in this eye exam. And that was that Elizabeth didn't know her alphabet. You know, her, her parents and the people who were taking care of her up until that point were completely incompetent. They did not teach her her alphabets. They did not teach her how to read. They just pretty much neglected her. They treated her as a glass figurine, which they could parade around and show, look, I have a daughter, but they didn't want to take the responsibilities of actually raising this daughter. So Elizabeth didn't know her alphabet. She didn't know the difference between uppercase letters and lowercase letters. So I objected to them giving her glasses. I said, look, you know, the reason why she failed this exam is because she doesn't know her alphabets. It's not because she can't see very well, it's because she doesn't know the alphabet. So time went on, and then I'd say around April of this year, the, the school decided to do uh, an eye exam, you know, test all the kids' eyes in her grade. And, you know, I, I spent a lot of time picking Elizabeth up from school. I, I see the other kids, you know, I pay attention to what is going on in her, in her schooling activities. And I can tell you right now that most of those kids don't know the alphabet. Okay, so they performed this eye exam on all these kids, and uh, they deemed that Elizabeth needed glasses. And the funny thing is, in the, the letter to the parents, it didn't even say what she scored in the eye exam. It just said that she needed glasses. And not only did she need glasses, it didn't determine, like, she needed glasses when she reads. You know, it doesn't, doesn't say whether she's nearsighted or farsighted. It didn't say whether her vision was 2030, 1525. It didn't give any of those indicators. It just the letter just simply said Elizabeth needs to wear glasses all of the time. And I was like, this is bogus. You know, Elizabeth is still struggling with her alphabet really. And also at this young age, children who are put into these kind of um, pressing situations, they don't perform very well. You know, there's a lot of factors that they're that they're not bothering with. Oh, you know what? Uh, I'll say that Elizabeth did know her alphabets at, at this point. You know, she knew her ABCs. She knew the difference between uppercase and lowercase. But I did notice that Elizabeth, sometimes she'll write words backwards. She, so she might have a slight case of dyslexia. And I do believe that people grow out of this dyslexia. So, you know, they, they weren't factoring in any of that. And once again, they didn't give a score. They just said she needs to wear glasses all the time. So, of course, I, I protested this with her mother again. I said, no, you know, what it could be is that, and her mother notices that Elizabeth sometimes will, will write letters backwards, and it's usually when there's more pressure and stress on Elizabeth to do something. It's usually 
when she's rushing through something, you know, when she wants to go play something instead of doing her homework, she won't pay attention to what she's doing. And this is because the child's brain is still developing. You know, this is something that a lot of people fail to acknowledge, that the child's brain and that a human brain continues to develop until their their mid to late 20s. So a child's brain at like five or six really isn't uh, all that developed. And that's actually why people do grow out of dyslexia. So they weren't factoring any of this. They just said, oh, no, she needs glasses all the time. I said, no, she doesn't. Okay. She just, you know, she just needs to continue to work on her alphabet, on her reading and writing, and and just let her brain develop a little bit more. So anyway, so the a couple days later, I, I bring Elizabeth to school. I pick her up a lot. So I, I, I pick her up at school, and I notice all now all of these kids are wearing glasses. There's like a, a ton of kids wearing glasses, and they have very thick lenses on these glasses. I, I walk by one child, and and the child's eyes was just like looking in all kinds of different directions. Like, you know, when you when you put on thick glasses, it's like distorts your vision. And if you're a kid, you know, you're just going to be like looking and trying to focus and your eyes are just going to be looking everywhere trying to focus because these glasses have totally distorted your vision. And I'm walking past these kids and I'm just like, oh, my dear God, these poor kids, their, their parents are actually in, incapable of their own independent thought. They're incapable of coming to the conclusions that I came to, that, look, you know, the the child's brain is still developing, they could be going through a case of dyslexia, they could have, they could still have trouble with their alphabets, they could be performing poorly because they're in a, in a new and kind of stressful testing situation, you know, instead of them thinking about all that, they just said, oh, well, the school knows best, let's, let's uh, give our child glasses, and let's give them this, these very thick glasses, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about, like, really thick glasses, something that you would see on like a, an old lady or an old man, very thick glasses. And as I said, you can see their eyes moving around in the glasses, like all messed up. So I was like, holy crap, the, the school or, or somebody, I mean, I refuse to believe that this is, uh, this is just, oh, it's just an accident, you know, it's the school just overstepping their boundaries. No, something about this tells me that it's planned out. Somebody either in the glasses industry wants to make more money Somebody somewhere is pushing the schools to do this, and they're intentionally ignoring all of these factors that I've listed out. I mean, maybe it is just incompetence on on an executive level. Who knows? Maybe it's just totally innocent incompetence. So anyway, this motivated me to to look into this more. You know, I wanted to see if, if this was a thing that they were pushing out there to have little kids wear glasses. And I was not surprised that they were actually having kids as young as seven months wear glasses. They actually have these new glasses that are specifically designed for toddlers and infants that are pretty much unbreakable. And uh, here's actually a little shot of it. You can see this child must be, I'd say a year, like I, let's say a year and a half old, almost two years old. And you can see that these are actually rather thick glasses, okay? This, this this toddler does not need to be wearing these glasses. And another interesting thing about these glasses, if you look at this toddler's ears, these glasses really mess up their ears, okay? Making them look like little mutants. And, and you'll see that in, in, in other videos. So uh, here goes a little boy, actually, and there's another image. I'm going gonna, gonna to show you uh, uh, an interview. And you can see this this kid's eyes, you know, they're, they're going cross-eyed, and he's, like, grabbing his face. He looks like he's, like, saying, oh my god, I can't believe I'm wearing these glasses. And you can tell those glasses are rather thick, and you can tell how thick they are and the magnitude that they that they have. But if you look at his eyes, you can see the distortion in the lens. So you can see if you look into the lens of his glasses, they distort uh, th the shape of his face there. Th that's how you can tell that they're rather powerful lenses. Okay, These aren't slight correcting glasses. These are really thick glasses that they're putting on these kids. So here's a video... And it's pretty much a, a piece of propaganda, something that they had on Portland Today. And it's a total propaganda piece where they're trying to promote kids to wear glasses. And not only are they having kids wear glasses, they're also patching one of their eyes to strengthen the other eyes. I mean, it is, it is uh, anal retentiveness to an extreme level. It's just like them trying to meddle and try to fix everything. They don't realize that they're doing harm. 
So let's play this video and let's uh, let's see the mentality of these people and the mentality of their children too. You know, it's very important to see the mentality of the children because then that will determine, okay, maybe this child failed the, the exam. For instance, the boy in this video, I think he's autistic. He's, he's definitely on the spectrum. So that might explain why he's failing his eye exams. So, so let's check out this video and let's just see the, uh, the tragedy unfold before us. ...and find support because a lot of the kids have had lots of surgeries and all that. that it makes finding parent support great. I know you were hoping that he would be well behaved on the couch. I love this. Go crazy <laughs> on, the Scott, on the couch, Scott, because this is good TV. Yeah, this guy is only concerned about good TV. This sicko does not give a shit about the health of these children or the welfare of these children. He's just concerned about his ratings and appeasing a certain audience. Uh, let me ask the other Jessica. I guess I could ask both of you about the conditions that your children have and why they wear glasses, but I think maybe more importantly is can you talk about the experience? Because do uh, you find it difficult raising kids with glasses? Have you run into problems because your kids have to wear glasses? Um. Wait, what? Talking about the conditions that led to these kids wearing glasses is less important than talking about the mother's experience of having kids who wear glasses. Yeah, yeah, that something about that just seems a little backwards. Well, you know, I have a five-year-old son, and then Marin is three, and um, she's been wearing glasses since she was seven months old, so it's kind of just become a part of her, but... See, this lady has had her child wearing glasses since she was seven months old. Jesus, let your kids develop naturally. You realize that when they're born, it's not like their vision's going to be perfect. It's not like their brain is fully developed. They need to develop, okay? Their eyes need to adjust. Their eyes need to learn how to see. And the hilarious thing is, is that you have articles like this BBC article, which came out around the same time that they started to push glasses on kids around like just uh, shortly after 2010. This one came out in 2014. And this article is just hilarious. It's about how, oh no, glasses doesn't make glasses don't make your vision worse glasses are actually great and, and here's just a little snap from it okay so there's no suggestion that wearing the correct glasses will make their eyesight worse than not wearing them at all children's eyes need to learn to see so if they don't have the right glasses they can develop so-called lazy eye or you know so on and so forth but the thing is like yes children's eyes need to learn to see and putting glasses on them are going to basically make sure that their eyes don't learn to see on their own. They're not going to be dependent on these glasses. And I disagree with this article. I do believe that wearing glasses does make your vision worse. It, it makes your eyes weaker, makes it more dependent on these glasses. And I do believe that these, eye, these glasses do strain the eyes in certain ways. And, you know, people can argue up and down the aisle with me, but that's just what I believe. I have a lot of people in my family who wear glasses. My mother was told when she was a kid that if she didn't wear glasses, she would be blind as an adult. She didn't wear glasses as much as they told her to. She actually felt that the glasses made her eyes worse, and she tries to do things without her glasses. She goes out and she looks at far spaces where her eyes can relax, and she can still see. Okay, so... The, the whole, oh, glasses don't make your, your vision worse, I, I just don't believe it, okay? Just from my own experience and from what I've seen in my life. So you have articles like this pushing it. You also have another article, which I'm going to go to right after I'm finished playing this video. So let's, let's go back to this lady. They love meeting other kids that wear glasses. What? And, you know, we're just starting to patch her um, as well. And it's not that big of a deal, but it's hard to patch a three-year-old. Yeah, it is hard to do something to somebody that doesn't need it. It's very hard to force things on your children. Anyway, I'm going to end that because they never get to the point. And, you know, I just, I asked you guys to, to watch that video again and notice how the, the glasses on the little boy are destroying his ears. Okay, they're making his ears all bent over and just discombobulated. And, I mean, you can just see the behavior of the kid. He's got all kinds of problems, okay? I think uh, his eyes still developing is the least of his problems. So now I'm gonna to go to this article, Rise and Toddlers Wearing Glasses Due to Improvements in Vision Screening. So this article came out 2014, right around the same exact time that that article came out from the BBC that talked about how children's eyes need to learn to see. You know, all of this came out around the same time. You know, all of this propaganda and all of this forcing kids to wear glasses bullshit came out around the same time. 
Okay, and that's usually how you can tell when something is uh, something is up. Okay, because you have the Mockingbird Media, and when I say Mockingbird Media, I'm referring to Operation Mockingbird, which is where they get all of these media outlets to to pretty much say and report on the same thing, and it's a great way to brainwash people and to get everyone in line. It's like, oh wait, everyone's saying it. It must be true. So all of these Mockingbird media outlets came out around the same time saying the same thing. That's usually how you can tell something's up. It's a very similar to this whole deep state nonsense that's going on in, in other media outlets, which I will be making a video on in the near future. There's no such thing as a deep state. There, there's just simply the state. Okay, so the state is very aware about these supposed deep state projects. I mean, these these projects are going on, but it's not the deep state, okay? That, that's just them trying to deflect the blame somewhere else. Oh, there's nothing There's nothing wrong with the state. It's this deep state that, you know, the, the state has no power over. You know, there's just this all-powerful, it, it's, it's just nonsense. Anyway, so going to this article, rise in toddlers wearing glasses due to improvements in vision screening. That's not what it is at all, okay? It just has to do with this uh, combined effort of all of these people trying to get kids dependent on glasses. It starts off with the, this supposed person, okay? It has this, this uh, little Mateo's right eye, okay? So little Mateo, so it says, uh, little Mateo's right eye was turning inwards and getting stuck, and the condition was worsening every day, every single day, it's just worse and worse and worse. I mean, that's usually how you can tell it's some bullshit. Very strange. Maybe you should take your child out more. Maybe stop putting them in front of artificially lit screens. You know, let their let their eyes go and uh, to the outside world and be stimulated like they're supposed to be. Maybe that maybe that would have helped. So they suspected their child had lazy eye. So they took him to see a doctor who discovered that Mateo was farsighted. That's a, that's a weird sign. I, I know people are farsighted and their eye wasn't turning inwards and getting stuck. So. His eyes worked so hard to see things that were close up that the right eye, the one with worse vision, got fatigued and wander. So the article, if you if you want to read it, as I said, that's the title. You can Google it. You know, I, I'm just going to go over some key points in it. So parents sometimes come to Sylvester in shock because their child fared because their child failed a routine vision exam, and they didn't know the child had a problem. And see, here it goes again, you know, the, this is what happens, as I said before. They, they take the, the kid to a routine vision exam, and when their child fails that exam, they don't think about any of the other factors. They have no independent thought, no thinking outside of the box, none of that. They just say, oh, they failed the vision exam. The problem must be with their eyes. And this is exactly what ends up getting all of these kids' glasses, is their parents' inability to think critically. To think about alternative things, in, in, incapable of thinking outside of the box. No original thought whatsoever. So there's an interesting thing in this article, and, and it goes, uh, and, and you know, it's the article even admits, basic vision screenings like those done at schools and at standard pediatrician well visits don't give a thorough enough picture of the eye's health and functioning. Uh, that's according to this to this one guy at Thou, which is supposed to be some like uh, some eye doctor. So th that is just an interesting thing about the the article. And remember before I said my cousin's school, Elizabeth School, conducted this uh, you know standard eye exam or this standard vision exam, and then they gave all of these kids glasses. They they sent a letter home and they told all these parents, your child needs glasses. And most of the kids at her school, they're they're like you know their parents are are first generation immigrants. They they really don't know better. So I'm mean, I'm not trying to say immigrants don't know better. I'm just saying if if you understand the scenario, you would you would realize like you know these people are just gonna do whatever they're told. Especially in a lot of these cases where people are terrified that if they don't do what the state tells them to do, the state will t will the state will take their kids away. You know, the state will say, "Oh, this is uh, child neglect. Uh, you're endangering the health care of your child," and then take the kid away. Of course, you know this is just leading more and more people to believe that the state is the supreme authority and the supreme arbiter of their child's health. So then the article goes on to say, and this is this is a hilarious thing. So uh, it says like, if parents are concerned their children will be teased about wearing glasses. Thou assures them that doesn't happen much because glasses are more stylish and attractive now. 
Some kids beg for glasses, even if they don't need them, because the cute, colorful glasses have become a status symbol. Now, this is another thing why I think a lot of people push glasses. Actually, surprising or not, my sister was one of these people. When my sister was in junior high school, she was probably uh, in seventh grade or something like that, people were telling her, oh, you look good in glasses. So my sister was trying to convince my parents that she needed glasses. She got into this. She wanted them for the status symbol. She wanted them because they looked good on her. So my parents took her to see an eye doctor. Not, not a regular doctor, an actual eye doctor. Because, you know, you can easily go to the vision chart and say in, intentionally say the, the wrong letters, you know, to make it seem like you, you need glasses. So they took her to see an eye doctor. And the, and the eye doctor, he, he brought down this uh, this this uh, device that essentially has all these different lenses in it so that you can find out which lens is best for you, which lens you see the best out of. And the doctor, I'm pretty confident my parents told the doctor, and also my sister had a history of not needing glasses, so the doctor was kind of like a little suspicious, like, wow, you know, I've done eye exams on this girl before, and she didn't need glasses like two years ago. Why would she need glasses today? So the doctor actually tricked her, and I, I like this doctor because he wasn't trying to peddle glasses out like some fucking kind of drug dealer. So what he did is he brought this thing down, and he he put uh he put no lenses in like uh he showed her he put like the the part where there are no lenses right, and he was like uh, how do you see now? And my sister was like, oh yeah yeah I see much better, and the doctor pulled the device away from her, and was like oh oh really? She's like yeah, and then he put his fingers through the device to show that there was no lenses in there. And then basically sent my sister on her way and was like, you don't need glasses. And made a fool out of my sister. So what my sister did was, I'm pretty confident over the next year, she did everything possible to strain her eyes and to mess up her eyes. Either that, or maybe she just got wise, and she was like, okay, now I know that they can trick me. And uh, pretty much a year later, she, she demanded that she needed glasses again. And then they, they took her to, I'm pretty confident she demanded that they take her to another eye doctor. And, and they took her to the other eye doctor. And then the other eye doctor was like, oh, yeah, you, you need glasses. And then my sister got glasses. And she's been wearing glasses ever since then. So this just goes to show these people, just like those, if you look at, if you look at those moms in that video, in that interview, you can tell that those are just like very yuppie-ish moms, very trendy moms who are just, who just have who just have glasses on their kids because they want their kids to be special and and the article goes on and uh, it finishes off actually the article finishes off and it says I think nowadays glasses are more popular Shaw says I think it's more of a fashion thing and she's totally right all of these people are just trying to basically accessorize their children all of, all of the other people well, well not all of these people you know some of them actually believe the state but Mothers like the mothers on that show, they're really just concerned with accessorizing their kids, with putting other things on their kids. They don't really give a shit about the health care of the child. They don't care that they're destroying the child's ears, deforming their ears, and screwing up their eyes, making their vision worse. They don't care about any of that because it's just a fashion thing. It's just a status thing. And, you know, you have all these yuppies. I mean, well, not yuppies. I would say hipsters. And here are some pictures of them who make a big deal with their glasses. You know, they, they really like, you know, having glasses on. I've actually seen people in New York City who have glasses, or, or at least the frames of glasses, with no lenses inside. You know, it's a hipster thing to do, just because it's become a type of accessory. So, anyway, this video was not about those hipsters. It was just about how the state is attempting to make kids more dependent well, not just kids, but people more dependent by basically getting them dependent on glasses. At the end of this video, I'm sorry it's a long video. Sorry I haven't made a video in a long time. I will be making more videos now that my cousin has moved out. So now I have some space. I have some some time where I can I can focus on making videos. This is just my first comeback video. It's a little different than my other videos, but a slightly slightly relevant to my topic of the state and the elite making us more dependent and less independent. I'll get back to my to my uncensored documentary. I still got like four parts to do on that. I apologize to those who like that. I'll definitely get back on my my anti-federalist series, on my, my arguments against the Constitution. And uh, yeah, I, I am back. I promise you that.